next, I think we wanted to jump into this idea of exploring kinky play, right? And like, what is kink to some degree? How do we go about like expressing it? What are some tips around kink that we think we would want you to know um, navigating this world, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. first and foremost, defining the difference between a kink and a fetish, because those often get mixed all the days Mm -hmm. so a kink is going to be you know it's a it's kind of an umbrella term that can fit all sorts of different actions activities underneath it a kink is something that is going to help heighten your arousal but it could be all sorts of different activities and it's typically considered taboo in culture Mm -hmm. right and so what's kinky to one person actually might not be kinky to another person because it might not be taboo to them but it's basically something be like out of the social norms right right and then obviously with fetishes that's more specific to an object or an action or activity that you really really value that really really would be something that helps heighten your arousal right like for some folks it that's the only way that their arousal is going to be heightened for other folks. Mm -hmm. It ramps it up a lot more than other activities. Totally. Um, Yeah. And I think the idea of, you know, kink is a lifestyle, right? Kink is just like this idea of like, this is part of who I am. You know, I am a, I'm a queer cis kinky person, right? Like it's part of your identity because it doesn't have to be sexual in nature. Right. When we look at some, DS relationships, right? Dom sub relationships, there can be no sex involved at all, right? I want you to send me $50 to go get, you know, this or so I can get this meal. Boom, that is a Dom talking to a sub and the sub and Dom can get so much out of that experience that doesn't involve genitals, right? Yeah. And that might be confusing to some people. But again, to sure. work- it's for them don't worry about it if it doesn't work for you it can work for other people and that's fine so totally and I think you know I am a firm believer that we are all kinky right there are things that go on in our lives and it doesn't matter if it's you know as small as you know pulling your hair right? Mm -hmm. Or dirt, dirty talk is kinky, right? Some Mm -hmm. light slapping, right? Mm -hmm. Is kinky, right? Or you go all the way into really, you know, hardcore BDSM stuff, right? It, it doesn't matter. It's just this idea of I like to explore my sexuality in a way that may be non- again this word traditional right <laughs> which is like penis in, in vagina or penis and anus or whatnot right exactly yeah so i think some things when i think about folks who are like curious about entering into the world of kink like oh mm-hmm. gosh what do we do how do we even get into it right. um you know, obviously starting with realizing that within the kinky community, folks are all about consent, enthusiastic mm-hmm. consent. Folks are so welcoming in the kink community and they really protect themselves, right? There's not right. to say that there aren't predators out there, but typically the kink community, they try to look out for one another, one another, try to take care of each other by making sure, hey, everybody is consenting and they're excited about it. Mm-hmm. And when we think about like lightly trying to enter into kink play, you even got to figure out like, what are you into? What is your kink? Like, is it even BDSM? Cause that's just one part of kink. And there are so many other kinks right. that are out there. Right. Totally. I, I love the idea too. Uh, when I talk with clients about kink and they're like, oh, I don't even know where to begin. You begin internally, right? Yeah. You begin just sitting with yourself and thinking about what this would look like. Right? Yeah, even right. if you want, even want to take it to reality, or if you want to keep it in your fantasy, right? Yeah. Yeah. A miss, yeah. a, a miss uh, conception is that every fantasy that we have uh, needs to be a reality, right? Mm-hmm. I was just talking to a client yesterday. I was like, "Do you know how many fantasies I have? Probably a thousand or more." Do right? <laughs> you, you know what I do? You know what I want to engage with of those tens of thousands? Maybe ten, right? Yeah. Maybe Maybe I want to put myself into these positions, right? But that just goes to show the complexity 
and how healthy we are, right? And yeah. when, as, as humans, yeah. and this idea too, within kink that, you know, um, you must ha have had trauma in some yeah. way to yeah. want, to want to engage in this lifestyle is just a real, again, sex negative view because yeah. people just don't understand it. So they assume, oh, you're into pain play or humiliation um, or, you know, ABDL, right? Uh, yeah. Adult baby diaper lovers. Thank you. My my little slur was about to show up and trying to say that. Oh, no. <laughs> so when in reality, that's not the case, right? Do people who have experienced trauma enter the kink community? Of course they do, because it's also therapeutic in some ways. It's great to express some of the stuff that they've experienced yeah. through the play that they're in. Yeah, but, reclaim your pain, reclaim your pleasure, all of that stuff. Yeah, ex exactly. But is it solely people who have experienced trauma engage in kinky behavior? Yeah. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely no. not. And I love your point of like, to figure out where you might be interested kink wise, like look at your fantasies, dive in a little bit. Like when you notice that you're fantasizing about something, what is it? Is it that mm -hmm. you like in your fantasy that someone's being assertive or do you mm -hmm. like that feeling of helplessness? Or do you like the idea of like role-playing and being somebody completely different, right? Like there are so many different directions that you could go with this. You know, do you fantasize about to the point of like being a different gender, like dressing completely differently, all these things and it, and it, all of it is great and fine. It's just what feels good to you. And then figuring out, you know, how do I want to, to play that out? Sure. Um, yeah, exactly. good. And finding your community can be really helpful, but again, like yep. if you start internally first, and I think introducing a kink to a partner can always be, it can be gentle. It can be a gentle process, yeah. right? Because you yeah. want to kind of get a feel first for like, think about for yourself, like, what do I actually want? Like, how do I actually want to play this out? Exactly like you were saying, Matt, like when I look mm -hmm. at my fantasies, which ones am I even interested in actually exploring? Right. And what, like, what is interesting about that for me? And then exactly. how can I then share that with my partner in a gentle, in a gentle yeah. way? And Julie and I will probably do a lot more videos on the kink topic because it's yes. it's something that we we both love exploring the kinky world. I think that the last piece of wisdom that we have about this would just be that you, person who has a kink or wants to explore it, are completely healthy. Uh, right? yes, exactly. There's nothing wrong with you in any way. You are not um deformed you are not you know yeah, weird or whatever nothing like that right a monster, not, that. Mm -mm. not at all it is it is healthy to have this expression within you um and like i said i am a firm believer that we all have kink within us and it's yeah. just whether or not we want to tap into it or unlock yeah. it right and we might not and that's okay yeah mm -hmm.